Do you mind grabbing your neighbor by the hand as we pray? Lord, we thank you for another day. You have been so good. Early in the morning, we seek you. Our soul thirsteth after thee as in a dry and thirsty land. As the deer panteth after the water brook, our soul thirsteth after the living God. We worship you. Would you bless your people who have come? Anoint us afresh. Renew our strength. Get us ready for the week that we must now labor, work, and war. Continue to be with us. Go before us and make every crooked place straight. Show us your salvation, and we'll give you praise. Would you anoint your servant that stands behind this sacred desk for these few moments? Speak to us. Show us your will. And then give us the power to change and do it for your glory. We thank you now. In Jesus' matchless and wonderful name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Would you give the Lord praise and thanks? Come on, saints, give him a real praise. Open your mouth and give him a good early morning praise. He is worthy. Our God is us. He can move mountains. Valley, hide me from the rain. Our God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever He will reign. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Then hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, he's so awesome, awesome, he's so worthy, awesome, he's so powerful. Awesome, he's my God is awesome. He's awesome, awesome. Ain't nobody like him. Awesome, awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. From the rain, my God is awesome, heals me where I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever He will reign. My God is awesome, my God is awesome, awesome. You may be seated in the Lord's presence. Surely the Lord is awesome in this place and he is worthy of all our praise. And we are grateful to be in his house once again. I'm grateful for the Lord's presence and certainly for yours. It's wonderful to know that no matter what's going on in our life, our God is still awesome he is awesome in his faithfulness 
awesome in his power awesome in his love awesome in his mercy awesome in everything he does and how can an awesome God do anything but give you an awesome life and so if he's awesome and able to give you an awesome life then you have a responsibility your responsibility is to give him an awesome praise <laughs> clap your hands all ye people shout unto God with the voice I want to go directly to the word of the Lord first Chronicles the 29th chapter first Chronicles 29 beginning at verse 1 here begins the reading of God's holy and eternal word. Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, my son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. And the work is great because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my heart gold for the things to be made of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of offer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the house, the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of the craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord God? So far, the scripture. I want to speak to you from this text, from the subject, the birthing of a new order. The birthing of a new order. The first three kings of Israel were Saul, David, and Solomon, and these were the only kings of the United Kingdom. If you remember, after Solomon's reign, the kingdom split in two. So you only had three kings of the United Kingdom. That was Saul, David, and then Solomon. Each one of these kings represents to us a different type of governmental structure or order. Different emphasis a different system, a different procedure, a different way or purpose. That's what I'm talking about when I say order. Each one of these orders are important to us because we learn from them either what to do or what not to do. We also learn from these orders what can happen if we follow God's system in terms of what will be birthed through our obedience. 
So we're talking about then the birthing of a new order and we're studying these three strategic men to show us what happens when we birth the right things through our obedience. The first one is Saul. Now, Saul has the greatest potential to be successful. According to the scriptures, he is head and shoulders over every man in Israel. Of all of these kings, it would be more likely that Saul would succeed and be powerful. But it didn't happen. Saul rose like a rocket, then fell like a rock. What happened? First of all, too much, too soon. One day, he is looking for his father's donkeys, his father's jackasses. The next day, Samuel anoints him to be king. I submit that if on one day you're looking for jackasses, anointed to be king the next day, by the third day, you act like a jackass. Too much, too soon. Most of the people that hit the lottery are broke within two years. Because when you get it fast, you lose it fast. Yes, that's why we have to be careful that we don't allow our children to be too spoiled by giving them too much before they're ready for it. Because then they'll grow up with a sense of entitlement and think everybody's gonna treat them like you are. You can mother them and then you can smother them. Yes, too much, too soon. That's why God processes you. Because he has to build in you the ability to handle where you're going. Mm -hmm. He'll never let you go someplace where your character can't keep you. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is not your success. The most important thing is your process. Because your process gives you the ability to handle whatever he puts in your hand. Mm -hmm. To put a great blessing in the hands of a weak person is to curse them. Because instead of it blessing them, it'll break them. Our light affliction that is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Now watch this. Affliction is light, but glory has weight. Glory is speaking of the time of splendor and success. And when you come into your kingdom, when you come into the power and the impact and the success of what God has called you to do, glory has to do with resplendence. Glory has to do with God being on display in such a great way that people look at it and say, wow. But glory has weight. Affliction is light. So then, if God is going to give me a pound of glory, but my afflictions are an ounce, then for every pound of glory he gives me, he's got to give me 16 afflictions. One pound of glory but 16 afflictions. Because if I'm going to carry the weight of the pound, I have to be tested by the ounces of affliction. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord shall deliver him because his affliction makes me stronger. Each affliction teaches me more about God. If I get it too fast, I really don't know him. 
It was affliction that taught me that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It was affliction that taught me he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Affliction taught me my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. It was affliction that taught me that when God is on your side, he's more than the enemies that are against you. You got to go through affliction so that you can handle the weight of glory. And other than that, you act like a jackass mm -hmm. yes he is he is Saul the willful one his name means demanded which immediately says his system or order is that of willfulness because you can't demand anything from God everything we get from God we get because of grace Mm -hmm. I know there's a scripture say command you me but we're taking it out of context you cannot command God to do anything mm -hmm. God hears us because of grace God hears us because of mercy God hears us because of his loving kindness in fact he loves me so much I don't have to demand because when somebody loves you you don't have to demand anything from them because they'll give to you out of the love in their heart Mm -hmm. But his name automatically shows us something's out of, out of whack here. Demanded. So now when he's waiting to take the army, and the custom is that the priest will come and give the sacrifice. But Samuel is taking his time. And the people are starting to leave. And so he says, well, Samuel, the priest is not here. I'm going, I'm going to offer the sacrifice in his absence out of order he is intruding in an office that wasn't his he was anointed to be king not priest yet he's offering the sacrifice because samuel is not there when you intrude in an office that is not yours you do not have an anointing for it so instead of creating a system of peace you create chaos Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful not grabbing stuff that God hasn't called you to. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be an apostle, at least know how to spell it. Yeah, if you're going to be an apostle, at least know how to spell it. Everybody's a prophet now. Mm -hmm. You out in the, in the parking lot giving prophecies to people, going in their car, writing on papers, and uh, it's called outhouse prophet. Because you have no authority. You have not been given license from the church. So you go in the parking lot to do your prophetic. But that is not ordained of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. What was the problem with him offering as a priest? Well, remember, God anointed him through Samuel to be king. After he was anointed, he prophesied with the prophets. That's prophet king now he intrudes into the office of the priest which would make him prophet priest and king no 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 there's only one prophet priest and king and his name's not Saul it's Jesus only Jesus can claim the titles of prophet, priest, and king. And when Saul intruded into the priest's office, he was out of order in terms of saying before Jesus came, I'm prophet, priest, and king. Let me prove it to you. When Samuel shows up, he says, the Lord has taken your kingdom from you. Mm -hmm. Because you have violated it intruding into an office that was not yours. And he has chosen a man after his own heart. Oh, the danger of moving in areas that you have not been called to. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You don't need the title. You don't need the papers. You need the anointing. You need his presence endorsing what you want to do. You don't need the seat. 
you need the spirit the seat only gives you the title the spirit gives you the power if you have the seat without the spirit you'll lose everything the Lord has taken your kingdom from you given it to a man after his own heart we shift from willfulness to the order of David David is the eighth child he is the son of Jesse eight represents new beginnings and resurrection Saul's name means demanded David's name means beloved because whatever God gives us he doesn't give us because we demand it he gives us because we're his beloved mm -hmm. we see in David now a different type of order Saul was head and shoulders over every man he came from a rich family so he had a certain amount of decorum and dignity but when David walks in the room it says he was ruddy so he's rugged mm -hmm. he's an outdoorsman he's uncouth he doesn't look professional he's he's unassuming but he's gonna get anointed Mm -hmm. he's no frills but he's getting ready to get anointed they didn't even call him to the anointing ceremony but he's getting ready to get anointed he comes in the room smelling like sheep with sheep dung smell on him but he's getting ready to get anointed it ain't where I come from it's where I'm going that's important Mm -hmm. I may have come from welfare, but he can anoint welfare recipient. I may have lived in a homeless shelter, but he can grab somebody from the homeless shelter and lift him up. That's why you can't despise nobody because the one you think will never be anything is the one that God will choose, anoint, and use to do great things for his glory. I may not look all that professional. I may be unassuming. I may not smell all that good but if he chose me he's about to anoint me and I'm getting ready to be a king oh yes mm -hmm, yes there's some of you in here that are queens and kings in disguise you don't look like it mm -hmm, you've heard me say it I love that saying I don't look like what I've been through because none of us in here do that. Mm -hmm. Some of us have gone through cancer, but we don't look like it. Some of us have been through divorce, but we don't look like it. Some of us have had abuse and rejection come from dysfunctional families. And if we were to describe the stuff that went on in our house, people wouldn't believe that we could be clothed and in our right man, having come through all that craziness. Mm -hmm. I don't look like what I've been through but there's another saying I like even better I don't look like where I'm going you can't judge my present condition on where God is taking me I may be ruddy but there's an anointing on me I may be unassuming but there's an anointing on me I may be unprofessional but there's an anointing on me I may not know the decorum of Saul but there's an anointing on me I may have come from a homeless shelter but there's an anointing on me my daddy walked out when I was three but there's an anointing on me nobody gave me a chance to make it but there's an anointing on me where are the Davids and the Davidas in this room that will give God a praise because in spite of where I come from I'm anointed to the a king or queen touch somebody say I'm anointed for this 
My family threw me away, but I'm anointed for this. I got hurt in church, but I'm anointed for this. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to give me papers because of the politics that was going on. But I, I don't have to worry about that. Because when man promotes you, he can snatch the promotion from you. When God gives it to you, mm -hmm, promotion come not from the east or the west or the south. But God pulls down one, puts up another. Saul can lose his because it was people that wanted him there. But David, when he gets in place, cannot lose it because he was God's choice. Mm, yeah, you want to be people's choice. Let me be God's choice. <laughs> Ruddy, they didn't even call him to the ceremony, but he's anointed. My question is, if Saul's order is willfulness, then what is David's? David's order is warfare. If you note know the life of David, he was always fighting something or something fighting him. Mm -hmm. It's the order of warfare. Do you not realize that his name is beloved and he's always fighting? And some of us, the only reason we're here in our right mind is because God loves us. Because if you knew all that I had to fight just to be here, some of us have been fighting all of our lives. Born into the world fighting. Came up in a family where I had to fight. Fighting with issues, drugs and addictions and poverty and racism and all kinds of things that were thrown at me. But no kingdom is established without warfare. Since the days of John to now, the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Your family will never be established without warfare. Your finances will never come together without warfare. Your future will never be what it ought to be without warfare. Is there anybody in here that says I'm willing to fight for what's mine? Mm -hmm. Touch somebody and say you're going to have to fight for it. Nothing is life is given to you easy. Even though David was anointed, the first thing he's got to do is fight this giant named Goliath. Yes, can I help you in here? The bigger your giant, the bigger your future. Mm -hmm. The greater your risk, the greater your reward. Saul looks at the giant and says, can't nobody whoop him, including me. I'm head and shoulders over every man, but I ain't nothing to Goliath. The soldiers look at Goliath and say, he too big to mess with. We better run the other way. David looks at Goliath and says, wait a minute. He is a giant. He's bigger than me. He is a better warrior. But there's a giant on my side too. Can I remind you that no matter what giant you're facing in here today, there's a giant on your side too. Your giant's name is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord that will provide. Your giant's name is Jehovah Shalom. He can give you peace in the midst of a storm. Your giant's name is El Shaddai. He's the all-sufficient one. He can meet any need you have today. Your giant's name is Jehovah Rapha. I don't care how sick you are. I am the Lord that he lives in. Your child's name is Jehovah Raha. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not war. Stop fighting and fearing your giant and look up and say, God is on my side. You can't beat me. You can't stop me. I got a destiny greater than my giant. Bring that 
that sucker to me. Anybody ready to tackle a giant? It's bigger than you, but it ain't bigger than God. It's bigger than you, but it ain't bigger than his promise. It's bigger than you, but it's not bigger than the anointing that can come on your life. And I certify you today to go out and kill a giant because God gets glory when you take on something bigger. The problem is our mindset is too small. Watch now, because I got to get to this, this third, this third order. He has to fight with his family, David. They don't invite him to the ceremony. He got to fight with Goliath. Then he has to fight with Saul. And Saul tries to kill him 17 times. And can't because you can't assassinate what God has anointed. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get to the last king, Solomon. And I want you to see this because Saul was not birthed to kingship, the people chose him. David was not even brought to the ceremony, but God chose him. Even if you're unappreciated, don't worry about it. Because if God choose you, the people who reject you today will have to say, oh, king, live forever tomorrow. Solomon is the only one who is birthed to be king. Because there are some things that come out of your warfare. There are some things that are birthed out of your struggle that would not be birthed unless you had to go through the struggle and the warfare. Are there any women in here that had babies? Could you tell me that you had that baby without any pain at all? Mm -hmm. There may be one of you, but most women in here will tell you that there was extreme pain, excruciating pain in me trying to bring something into this world something new that the world had never seen but in order for me to bring it in it cost me some pain i cried i've seen women crawling on the floor mm -hmm. i've seen women they didn't say uh, uh you know get my wig make sure i'm looking good when them pains start hitting I don't care how I look just get me delivered because deliverance cannot always be cute sometimes deliverance is messy and ugly because in reality when you birth that baby everything come out of you what you want to come out what you don't want to come out everything come out of you Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you going to birth your next destiny? Trying to sit up here being cute. How you going to birth your next destiny? Trying to sit up here being polished. You better get a radical praise, a radical prayer life. You better hold on to that altar. Shake your wig off. Shake your clothes loose. Get out of your mascara. Let it run down your face. I got a giant to kill and a king them the bill I'm birthing a new order and I can't do it too so. mm -hmm. yes you mind being active and tell somebody this ain't gonna be cute 
and he births Solomon. Saul, willfulness. David, warfare. Because it's through warfare that you learn how great and how powerful God is. Solomon is wonder. Yes, he is the order of wonder. Because after warfare, and that's why some of you have been in such intensive warfare. Because you're getting ready to birth something that is more wonderful than everything ever birthed before. Solomon has such a wonderful kingdom till he doesn't have to fight like David did because the warfare is over. David says, my son Solomon has been chosen to be king, but he's young and inexperienced. He's a kid. So I had to prepare some things for him. So he says, I've, of my own hand, watch this, I've got gold, 7,000 talents of gold, $1.8 billion. Mm -hmm. The father gives him thousands of talents of silver. When you calculate it, it's $52 million. He's anointed at 15, takes the throne at 18. But when he takes the throne, his assets are over $1.8 billion dollars because the father set him up can i help somebody in here daddy is about to set you up your father is rich with houses and lands there's some stuff that your daddy is preparing for you eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard neither has it entered into the heart of man those things that god had prepared for them that love him that's why you had to war that's why you had to be rejected that's why they didn't call you to the anointing service that's why saul chased you that's why goliath tried to kill you your daddy got some stuff that you gotta be able to handle by warfare you're ready for the wonder without the warfare you cannot birth the wonder would you stand to your feet